Dr. Bart Zeno joins us. He delights in these things as well. He is a historian with Deakin University and a huge fan of the Faulkner Leisure Centre and Outdoor Pool. How are you going, Bart? Yeah, good, thanks, Bart. Um, how much of your professional life has been spent looking at pools? Oh, not a great deal, Raph. I'm a um, historian of Australian history generally. It uh, needs must. Uh, we, we've been involved in a campaign to try and preserve our outdoor pool uh, this year from a, in a, a redevelopment. So I've been uh, learning on the fly uh, about our local pool. It's, it's got a tremendously interesting history. Tell me that I didn't know about this at all, the Miss Fanta competition. Tell me about that. Uh, well, rival radio station of yours and uh, a uh, soft drink company were running uh, Miss Poolside Quests in uh, 1972 and they uh, went all around the city. I'm sure some of your listeners will uh, remember this and they'd nominate uh, Miss Poolside from the various uh, pools and uh, Miss Poolside Faulkner was uh, was Deborah Collins of Glenroy who uh, has eluded us here at, uh, at Faulkner for some time. Oh, you haven't, so, you uh, haven't found her? We've not found Deborah, no. Damn. Uh, do you want to repeat uh, her like name just in case someone who knows her is listening? Deborah, what's her name? Deborah Collins. Uh, Deborah Collins. in 1972. So if you're out there, Deborah, love to hear from you. <laughs> um, and I didn't know, were there pool guards that lived at local pools? It is my understanding that uh, the, uh, the the pool uh, managers would be uh, accommodated, not everywhere, I guess, but uh, there, there were facilities to accommodate them during the uh, the season that pools were open, and so those characters became quite well known in their communities. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't know if we ever had a pool guard at the Carlton Bars. That's where I grew up. Uh, okay, put your historian's hat on me. Uh, on, not on me, on you. Where do yeah. they figure pools in our sort of social and cultural history? What function do they serve, do you think? Oh, look, I mean, they're really important community centres, actually, and the, the history of pools in sort of post-war Australia really points to this. You know, in Victoria alone, there were something like 200 pools built by councils in the period from 1950 to 1980. And if we think about where I am here in Faulkner, um, they were really there as measurements of municipal progress, municipal pride. Uh, they were a sign that uh, a community was building in uh, those particular places, and councils were really keen to uh, to provide them, you know, along with the roads, along with uh, uh, the sewering, along with uh, the football grounds, and even here we had uh, it come along with the bowling club. And so they were really places to allow people to gather together. It was really important at the time to provide for young people. We were in the middle of the baby boom. Um, so they were really significant places for young people to get together, especially in a safe uh, place. You know, the swimming uh, outside of, of formal pools uh, was actually a very dangerous thing uh, to do. And, and people, there were spates of drowning. But the histories of some of these pools are really predicated on uh, councils recognising that it was dangerous to swim in local waterways and that they needed to provide safe uh, recreational facilities like this and to allow you know, migrant communities especially who, who still have lower uh, levels of, of swimming ability uh, across the board, you know, it was important for them to have safe places to learn how to swim and, and to enjoy the water. What do you like about your local pool? I like a, uh, a late uh, summer evening, uh, taking the kids out there uh, as it gets cooler. I'm, I'm a bit of a pasty fellow. Uh, it has to be sun smart, so the, the late evening is uh, is a nice time just to sort of wind down at the end of the day, uh, let the kids loose, uh, wear them out hopefully, and um, get them back into bed after that. <laughs> and why you're like, why do you get involved with your local pool and trying to save it? Like, why does that matter to you? Uh, my wife describes it as a happy place, and um, I, I understand exactly why she finds it so uh, appealing uh, as a place to calm and clear your head. But actually, beyond that, um, I have really plugged into my community through uh, through the pool. I've met all sorts of people, extraordinarily diverse community, and I wouldn't know it uh, except for you know being friendly with my neighbours and people in the street. But the pool really gives you a chance to uh, to connect with folks that you wouldn't usually connect with, that you wouldn't have time to sit down and have a chat with. Uh, and I love it. I mean, it's it's opened up a whole new vista of my own community for me. The most important question I'm going to ask you is this one, Bart. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. 
Patrick in Mount Evelyn says you taught him in first year at Deakin. Uh, we absolutely loved him. What a champion. But do you even remember Patrick from Mount Evelyn? I don't even know where he was from then. Do you remember a Patrick? Oh, I'd, 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 I'd love to get a surname, but Patrick might, might like to know that I grew up in Mount Evelyn as oh. well. So, um, uh, look, I'm sure we can reconnect. <laughs> so drop, us, drop us a line, Patrick. I'd love to hear from you. Nicely um, handled. Nicely handled. Well done. Um, thanks so much, Bart. No worries at all. Thanks any time. Dr. Bart Zeno, historian at Deakin University, huge fan of the Faulkner Pool.